allowing crime based on race what actual privilege all right like. here's some oh this is gonna be a good one this is gonna be a spicy one I boys buckle the f up work. because i'm gonna go on and and defend petty crime again are you guys ready for this so uh before we get to walgreens which everyone is talking about this happened uh monday but I don't think the Damn footage was really out gross. there until yesterday. Um, I'm warning you guys, this this man uh, gets shot, a security guard, but he lives. You don't see him get shot in the video, but you do see the lead up. So mm. I still, if you have children around, I, I wouldn't have them watch this. Uh, Lenox Mall in Atlanta, I guess it used to be one of the, the, the better malls, oh. shot in the chest, uh, mm. point blank. So I'm confused by this. Like, is he going to say that like people are defending someone who shot another person in the chest? Because I 100% don't Health think that that is an acceptable thing to do. I think that's ridiculous, but what's going on here? Hold on. I don't want to show this. So these dudes have like guns and they're pointing it at the guy. Here's the thing, guys. Uh, some may not know this about me, but I, uh, I'm anti-murder. So... There's that. That's a thing I believe. I, I am a, I'm an anti-murder kind of guy. Unpopular opinion, but uh, I think murder is bad. Okay. Doesn't really matter who's doing it. Uh, it's bad. Okay, let's see. The story wait. says they were demanding his Apple store card. I think you have to call. And, uh, Steven Crowder and others like him love using, like, solved cases where, like, a black person has committed a crime, which happens all the time just like white people also do murder all the f time as like a reason to justify the racial agitprop that they're about to engage in okay the main difference here always is accountability and i need you to understand this the main difference here is not saying that like oh well this black person did a murder so we need to police all blacks like that is a psychotic and racist approach just like we always all say or at least laugh like about uh, people billion. saying like Defense kill all men is. men are scum or uh even ban people that say like kill all white men which now a bunch of people are gonna say and get banned subsequently because what like the overwhelming majority of pedophiles are white men the overwhelming majority of serial killers are white men you don't fucking decide that like all white men are bad then for people listening it's very clear the security guard does not want to get violent. He's trying to avoid confrontation. Two people cornering him with a fire. He's backing up. And finally, you don't see it, but yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, you actually don't That's see it, happens. but they shot him. Uh, the God. man, for, no, he lived. No, good. He's still alive, yeah. from what I understand. Hey, can I can I say at this point? Can I say can I say overweight hood rat bitch when she shoots someone with a gun who is innocently yeah. trying to be nonviolent? Can I call that woman a bitch? I just want to make sure that's not a violation of YouTube guidelines. That's a question. Calling someone, hey, can we say that that woman? Can I, at least can I say she's acting bitchy? Oh, uh, well, that's yeah. bitch ish. Blowing a Better. hole. Hey, why didn't he continue with the hood rat? Why did you just uh, go into the bitch one? What's up? I, I didn't realize when you, uh, when like a black person commits a, a, a crime uh, that gives you, everybody knows you can just say uh, the N word. Why, why didn't he just say that? I wonder. People don't give a fuck about calling a, a, a murderer a bitch. Pretty sure it's the, uh, the hood rat part that probably people will get upset about. And not because like that person is a bad person because he is. But when you're like, oh, that's a hood rat, you're, uh, you know, saying that this is how black people are because that's what it's historically been used and associated with. Yeah, that's not, not about that individual that you're like yelling at. Same uh, mentality as the N-word, by the way. I hope that those people were immediately caught and they're in jail. I doubt that if they were caught, I don't know the details of this case because I don't look into like every single instance where a black person shot a white person. The reason why that kind of stuff doesn't get a lot of coverage is because justice will be served in that circumstance if it hasn't been yet. That's the difference. And this is not an isolated incident. Um, this happened, by the way, Atlanta Zone Two. So I looked up some police stats from there. Uh, murders have increased 17% since last year. Jeez. Shootings wow. 26%. But here's the kicker. They they increased from 2019 to 2020, 133% murders Ooh. and shootings 164%. So total, you're looking at about 150 wow. and uh, 180 Change. something respectively since the riots have started. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. The riots. Yeah, the riots are the reason. 2020 was horrible for most places. I can't believe they are outdoing that now. Really?
I no, it's I can't because going, I thought yeah. 2020 would be the worst. Oh my gosh, it's like a pinball machine. They're trying to hit the high score. I know. Yeah. Well, it's almost like they got away with stuff for so long they just kept doing it because it actually ah. has nothing to do with the cause. Dave, yeah, that's logical. <laughs> Stop it. And it's you, almost Dave. as though there are no. Can you explain some chatter saying COVID made me kill? Crime, violent crime, nonviolent crime occurs as a consequence of socioeconomic conditions. This is like sociology 101. It's a concept that, like, the ancient Greeks understood. So I think that we should probably also recognize that at this point. It is, like, literally as old as time itself. It's something that, like, dudes who thought the sun could be, like, a, a light bulb literally understood. Like, you know, when people don't have access to stuff, they do things to, you know, to better their uh, social conditions or their material conditions. So that's what I'm saying. When, I, when you see a rise in crime rates, that usually directly corresponds to material conditions okay crime goes up if there are more poor people yes the lawless land of yours canadian crowder by the way the u.s is a big police litter of tanks and budgets yeah the other thing that i also have to acknowledge is like if crime rates corresponded to like police budgets and police budgets going down increase crime then we should have seen police budgets go down but police budgets did not go down police budgets went up all around the country there is this republican narrative that like Police budgets have gone down and crime has risen. Where, motherfucker? Where have the police budgets gone down? At most, they didn't do the actual increases that they were slated to, but police budgets still are ballooning significantly higher than anything else. So that is a lie that Republicans tell routinely. This goes to what happened yesterday, which has gone viral. Uh, to what, so that's an extreme example. Yeah. And this is another example. Um, uh, well, people don't know this. Anything under $950 in San Francisco that you steal uh -huh. is no longer, uh, basically, they can't do anything. Oh, I'll be back. Right. Yeah. Are yeah. you serious? Free reign. Yes. <laughs> so these people <laughs> shot, uh, the, that guy, uh, the, those that security guard was shot by two people. And That's then here, sad. two two Walgreens security guards in San Francisco just watch as a man <laughs> with a bicycle inside of Walgreens <laughs> yeah. take stuff. So you think... You okay, so the previous case is like a violent crime and completely unacceptable those 15 to 16 year olds were caught and they're gonna get punished for it which is good it's a good thing now the case that he's going to is one that we are already familiar with which is in san francisco a dude on a bike is stealing shampoo from a walgreens in san francisco which decriminalized petty theft under 900 dollars. now i need you to identify what the connective tissue is in both of these cases. What do you think is the reason why he started off the conversation with like a murder and is now moving on to this other instance? You think someone comes in yeah. with sticky hands on a bicycle, you might say, oh, something's going on here. <laughs> might be on alert. Better let him finish. Nothing <laughs> crossed their mind as you can hear by the conversation. Here you go, San Francisco. I wonder what the reason was for Steven Crowder to tie in these two completely unrelated incidents. One of a violent murder in cold blood in Atlanta or in, in uh, you know, Georgia. I wonder what the reason why he's, uh, you know, talking about a shampoo bandit. Hmm. Um, Wait, let me look at the title real quick. Maybe that allowing crime based on race what actual privilege looks like it is truly remarkable that this is allowed on youtube like i mean this is just like the most ridiculous racist propaganda i've seen it's insane it's preposterous it's wild that this is like i mean this is just white supremacist anti-black rhetoric unless steven crowder thinks that like Petty thefts in, for example, uh, San Francisco are not being done by white people. And it's an exclusively black thing. Just wear a clan robe, dog. At this point, just literally just wear a clan robe, you know, burn a cross. I mean, you're doing that. You're too much of a pussy to admit it, but that's kind of what you're doing. Not even kind of. That's literally what you're doing. You're just like worried that if you use the right words that you'll get uh, targeted. This is also straight up like what your fucking grandparents watch or watched on AM radio, listened to on AM radio and watched on Fox News for years. This is the exact same racial agitprop that uh, made your grandparents even more racist than they actually were. 
Because they got those email chains about like, here's a black man murdering a white lady. This is why we need cops to violently suppress all blacks. This is what Steven Crowder is doing here. Is he stealing hair color? It's the weakest thing ever. Stop it. Look, well, he's not even in a rush with the automatic door. No. He's, oh wait! Unbelievable. I've I've been I've been more uh, frustrated, you know, more rushed. There's more of a sense of urgency when I get an angry text from my pregnant wife. Yeah. Well, like, ah, stupid Walgreens door. This guy's just like, wait for it. It'll open. The most yeah. ironic thing is he brought his bike in because he's afraid someone might steal it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can just leave it outside. And this is this is something too that's you know New Jersey was just voted uh, or it was just named best state to live in. Oh my god! <laughs> Who did they and vote? I thought the headlines write themselves. But think about this for a second. This is what happens in New Jersey. In New Jersey. You can actually be sued by someone who breaks into your house. People say, well, because New Jersey has castle doctrine. No, no, you also have a duty to retreat. So in other words, oh, unless yeah, you can prove wow. that there was, no, there was no back door, yeah. if you trip a guy in your house, you could be sued. We are now in an environment, like in San Francisco, where criminals are encouraged. And law-abiding citizens are discouraged from taking part in society. They're fearful. Yeah. They are afraid. And uh, Wait, what the fuck? I'm confused, like, does he think that duty to retreat implies that, like, someone who is, like, violently breaking into your house and trying to murder you, if you shoot them, uh, you're gonna get in trouble? Like, it's... What the fuck? Also, I'm so confused. Like, he just jumped from these two black teenagers uh, trying to murder a, a security guard to another black teenager in San Francisco stealing a bunch of shampoo and then jumped back to New Jersey uh, and and duty to retreat. Like it, it, none of it actually makes sense at all. This is of course true. You see that I was surprised to add fewer that I don't know. I, you know, here. Twitter obviously has their thumb on the button. You could at least try and make the left look good because when Walgreens was trending, immediately leftists rushed to the defense of these people. So let me read you some of these. If you're concerned about looting, I've got some news for you. It's true. Organized crime, one dude in a bicycle shop from Walgreens, the real organized crime preventing people from getting their medicine is the pharmaceutical industry. These... V these criminal pre if victim shaming is a thing oh yeah perpetrator who's the victim here walgreens why are you defending walgreens this is what i don't understand like wh what are you doing i thought you hated walgreens because they like i don't know throw up the gay flag or something for pride all of a sudden you're uh mr walgreens defender i thought corporations like billionaires and and corporations were bad because they are are tolerant uh aesthetically tolerant to the gays and the blacks what happened now you're Mr. Corporation Defender? I thought you were the populist here. You're praising. Uh, is a thing. Yes, <laughs> definitely. So one guy wrote, organized crime equals one dude on a bicycle shoplifting from Walgreens. The real organized crime, preventing people from getting their medicine as the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah, I'm sure he was picking yeah, up his ivermectin. Trap, you you the irony is like, sick. Walgreens isn't even trying to get you to fucking defend them. Because like, shoplifting, whether it's done by people who already work there, or done by the fucking customers, like random people or whatever is already built in to their budget like walgreens does not give a shit about shampoo being stolen you can say you're a little bit brain dead all you fucking want it's so stupid for the record all of their employees are trained not to fucking touch the shoplifter because they would get into significantly more trouble if one of their fucking ten dollars an hour cashiers actually tried to be a hero in that situation and uh you know got injured it's not worth it's just literally not fucking worth. De-escalate the stolen goods is probably just accounts already written as a write-off. It is. It is. Banks tell tellers not to fucking touch robbers. These chains tell you to fucking not touch someone who's stealing shit. It's not worth it. It's literally not worth it. Why do you advocate for theft in any form? Well, there's a couple different uh, kinds of theft that I think is like totally fucking fine, which is piracy, okay? For example, I think piracy is fine. And you do too. There's not a single person in this 37,195 viewer chat that hasn't stolen some form of intellectual property. Now, people will turn around and say piracy ain't theft. It's fucking theft to the publishers, motherfucker. Yeah, explain that to the... Uh to the multi-billion dollar uh, movie industry and uh, the music industry. Because I'm pretty sure they think it's theft. And I don't mean like fucking what the Somalian pirates are doing. Especially if you don't have the means to buy this shit. Which is part of the reason why I tell you like, you know, use a fucking ad uh, blocker or a VPN. Like, don't be stupid. If you don't have money to fucking subscribe, you don't want to see the ads. Like, literally, I tell you once 
at the top of every hour what to do. IP can be infinitely replicated, products can't. It doesn't matter because the people have designated that intellectual property as their own and you're still taking it from them without monetary compensation. It's still theft. You can try to do mental gymnastics. It's theft to them. The replication doesn't change anything. Like it, it literally doesn't change anything, okay? Now, the reason why I have this position is because this is a victimless crime. And I think that it's not that significant of an overall problem for the victimless uh, uh, crime that's happening here. Now, here's the real problem here. What we must do is examine why someone is so down cataclysmic that they're fucking resorting to stealing a duffel bag full of fucking shampoo to resell. That's the real problem. But no one wants to address that. And instead, they come up with these moronic fucking solutions, which by the way, I don't have an issue with at all. Uh, as far as like decriminalizing petty theft, uh, I don't have a problem with that. I, I think that that's still ultimately not the worst uh, situation at all. Um, I, I think that we should be decriminalizing shit like this. But we also need to solve the underlying material conditions that lead people to running into a fucking Walgreens and stealing shampoo so they can resell it if that is what they're going to do. So that's why I don't stress over that. And if you were to change my perspective Dang or, uh, you know, Chinese. distort what I'm saying here and be like, well, how would you feel if someone came into your house and like put a gun to your head? It's like, that's not what happened here. Like a home invasion is not justifiable. How would you feel if they stole your car? It's not the same. A car is significantly more important to me as an individual than a hundred dollars worth of shampoo bottles is to Walgreens. Do you understand? And you can't compare piracy to stealing something physical? Dude, the only difference between piracy on that the internet is. versus like literally going to a store when such things existed and stealing the fucking CD is that it's easier to do on your computer. That's it, okay? Shut the fuck up. I hate this like justification, which I don't even have a fucking problem with. Wrong, privacy doesn't deprive anyone of their property. Deprive Walgreens of the property that they were going to sell that they've already accounted as a loss. It's going to be replaced. They're not causing a shortage of shampoos anywhere, motherfucker. That's the point. That's why it's innocuous in comparison to like larger thefts that occur daily on a daily basis. How do you not see it? The irony is Walgreens had to pay $4.5 million last year in a class action lawsuit back to their employees for wage theft. So that's the real fucking theft. Wage theft is significant, rampant, and also most people don't even recognize that it occurs. The irony is you poor, dumb worker motherfuckers arguing with me and others and amongst yourselves defending, functionally defending Walgreens when Walgreens is just stealing the fuck out of your surplus value, your labor that you have generated uh, uh, profits for them for uh, with, and you hyper focus on the poor fuck that literally stole shampoo that no one is going to remember so that he could fucking make a living himself. Also, the bullshit is victimless. One of the, this is one of the best uh, arguments I've seen. Best arguments because it's laughable. Shoplifting is not the reason why retailers are closing. It's what the retailer is saying is the reason why they're closing. When in fact, they're closing all around because it's no longer as profitable for them. Not as a consequence of shoplifting, but in general. So again, you're a fucking idiot if you, uh, and, and a dupe, if this is what you truly believe in. That's one. Love if you're you, upset about brick and mortar stores like this closing, then you should reshift your focus onto online shopping absolutely dominating this shit. Not fucking, uh, uh, like, petty theft happening in San Francisco. Or how insane property uh, value is in San Francisco rendering it useless to have a store like this and maintain this property. How do you know it's that reason and not what they're saying? Because they're closing stores all around the country and in higher percentages in other places. You got any proof of that, homie? You're just going to spit straight lies? Straight lies uh, it, with respect to what? Like that I'm not taking the fucking corporate uh, spokesperson's uh, rhetoric for this a hook, line, and sinker and instead talking about how it's no longer profitable, not because of the fucking string of petty thefts that are occurring, that are recurring, but instead because uh, uh, because they already are like not as profitable as a consequence of fucking online shopping exploding during COVID Boys. with uh, Instacart and uh, Uber Eats and Postmates delivery, making it easier to just like an Amazon specifically, Amazon Fresh, making it significantly easier to fucking deliver and uh, uh, to your home and DoorDash too. Forgot to mention DoorDash, Grubhub. Second quarter revenue rose 4.8% to 32.8 billion, but missed analysis average estimate of 35.53 billion. 
Net income attributable to Walgreens rose by one billion or one one dollar and nineteen cents per share in the second quarter. There you have it, dude. Their profits are not increasing in the same way that they had previously predicted. So they're restructuring. Theft is so bad in the Walgreens in the area that only Walgreens is closing and not CVS. You know, it's just that these uh, these criminals uh, they specifically hate Walgreens and that's why they're uh, targeting Walgreens and that's why only the Walgreens are closing. Why would they make a bold statement? Because. Who the fuck would question it, dude? It's great. It's cannon fodder. And even if the fucking CVSs are also closing in that region, again, it stems from the fact that the property fucking, the, the property is too expensive for upkeep. Not because petty crime is occurring. Pharmacies and these sorts of storefronts close all the fucking time. They literally announced that they were going to close a fuckload of stores already. Walgreens did. What do they gain from this lie? sympathy a conversation that means that they're not doing a bad job but it's simply like the government failing to protect them as they are supposed to because the government is supposed to protect uh capital so it's out of their hands that like rampant crime is the reason why they have to close down not because like they didn't hit their fucking target their target growth walgreens plans to close appro approximately 200 u.s stores the company announced in an sec filing according to a document posted tuesday on securities and exchange commission website they moved to close stores a review of real estate footprint follows a review of the real estate footprint in the United States. Huh? So real estate is too expensive and uh, they can't compete. They're, uh, they're closing down locations as they announced since 2019. That's weird because brick and mortar is, uh, hard to, hard to makes it significantly harder to compete against like, uh, online, uh, stores. That's crazy. That's literally exactly what I said, but Hey, what, what, what proof do I have? Right. Anyway, let's keep going. This is the Kamala defense, right? Well, I know he's shoplifting from Walgreens, but Big Pharma. I'm like, the two aren't connected. Yeah, he's not. He's thing. not behind the pharmacy. Hey, by, by the way, by the way, you guys are walking billboards for Big Pharma. Yeah. Okay. Two companies, and yeah. I'm not saying that. The, I'm not saying anything anti-vaccine at all. No. But I'm saying you guys have no problem video. asking for mandates and passports with really only three companies, two, that have yeah. a duopoly in the United States yeah. with Moderna and Pfizer. I never want to hear from you or Stephen. Stephen Colbert did a let's all go to the lobby with vaccinations by yeah. pharmaceutical <laughs> name. Never again can you lecture me about big pharma. I don't care about your kashtanga root or what you're doing with- Wait, what? What does this have to do with what the fuck's going on? I'm so confused by this. Ayurvedic medicine? No, no, no. When, when push came to shove, you guys became quizlings for two pharmaceutical companies. It's what? done. It's over. You're a lackey. Go home. Wait, what is he talking about? Who the fuck is like repping pharmaceutical companies? Now, these are other tweets justifying it <laughs> regarding the mean? Walgreens. What does he mean? Please, someone explain to me what he's saying. He's saying that because people were uh, pro-vaccination, that they were lackeys for big pharma. Is that what he's saying? Oh my God, that's actually too stupid to fucking understand. Oh my fucking God, dude. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. First of all, the mass inoculation campaign was literally socialized medicine, you fucking dingus, dude. You are so stupid. It was literally the one time that America engaged in an action that resembled socialized medicine or universal healthcare. What the fuck kind of take is this? Dude, Steven Crowder fans, like, they're too stupid. Uh, actually, I don't know. I, I think like, they probably will end up getting COVID at this point. And, and because they're definitely not vaccinated, they'll probably have long-term uh, damages from it. But uh, what are you going to do? I literally, I can't get myself to feel bad about that. CEO getting a $25 million bonus. If you're concerned about looting, I've got some news for you. This fucking idiot literally said that, uh, you know, mass vaccination campaigns is actually uh, defending big pharma. <laughs> oh, well, there's a hot take. And then, of course, resident, resident pile of garbage, <laughs> Tariq Nasheed tweeted, yeah. this oh, Walgreens yeah. situation is one of those see what happens when we don't let the police do their job and kill those N-words propaganda stories. Well, I believe you're paraphrasing because I wouldn't use that type of racist language, but right. the general sentiment, correct. <laughs> yes. Well, and also what? Yo, I can't believe he went there, dude. That's crazy. That is like, dude, he is so fucking racist, dude. He's a horrible person, dude. God damn, I thought hood rats was going to be the most racially charged thing that he was going to say. I didn't. Well, I was wrong, boys. Uh, pack it up. He said, unironically, what this Walgreens situation is one of those see what happens when we don't let the police do their job and kill those N-words propaganda stories. And he said, I agree with that. Like, I, I agree. That is true. That it, this is one of those stories. I don't agree with the usage of the, the N-words, but I do agree with that. Words, propaganda stories. Well, I believe you're paraphrasing because I wouldn't use that type of racist language, but right. the general sentiment, 
correct. <laughs> I mean, he's just, he's saying like, yeah, no, I, he, the general sentiment of shooting those N-words he agrees with, just not the usage of the N-word, which by the way, that is liberal aesthetics, aestheticism, like to a T, as long as you don't say the N-word, like uh, nothing you say could be racist, ever perceived as racist. Even if what you're saying is literally like, you know, kill those black people. Like that's, is that an acceptable sentiment? No. We'll yeah. And, and also way, that's not what happened. He left on a bike with a doing. trash bag. He, of he should, three. he should actually, by the way, then you should get Steven Crowder to say, see what happens when we don't let the police do their job and kill those black people. Is that better? Like I would ask Steven Crowder like, hey man, can you say that then? Can you say it without saying the N word and, and saying uh, black people instead? Would you, would you be comfortable saying it? I mean, he literally did say it, but you know what I mean with a trash bag he of strolled stuff. away <laughs> yeah having, a, having a cop shot. handcuff him is not this like tell me the yeah. story where somebody has been shoplifting and his behavior was like officers i'm sorry i'll drop the goods and was shot and killed tell no, me that story I, I, yeah, because i haven't read it yet want, right as far as i'm concerned that man bunned uh guy in the bomber jacket that looks like he was one yeah. of the, the the guards in the santa claus when the elves tied him up <laughs> with tinsel that guy should have clotheslined this guy in the bicycle yeah. like don't why would someone who is literally urged not to take action against petty theft put their life on the fucking line potentially or even risk a fucking injury over two hundred dollars worth of stolen shampoo they're getting paid ten dollars an hour he would probably get fucking fired he's not tsa he, that's his job papega no it's not motherfucker you guys are so stupid that's not the job of a fucking security guard the job of a security guard is to just look menacing and also follow black people around in the store that's literally the job of the security guard. The security guard is not supposed to be a heroic Rambo type figure. You fucking childish baboons, dude. That's not their fucking job. Their job is to look like there is a presence of security. His job is to be a deterrence measure, look menacing, you know, racistly follow black kids around the store. And lastly, call the authorities and give a, a as accurate of a depiction of the suspect as possible to the authorities. That's literally the job of the security guard. Anyone who tells you otherwise is ridiculous and foolish and also unaware of how that works. I hate that, like, I know for a fact some idiot is going to be in the chat and be like, well, I'm in Texas and I did security in Texas for a fucking bar for years. Actually, our job is to beat the shit out of people. Like, okay, dude, well, well we're not talking about you, different. okay? Okay, Paul Blart, mall cop, shut the fuck up. You're going to lose your business if you don't stop people <laughs> yeah. from coming in and stealing everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well... This is something that's also interesting. Uh, arrests in San Francisco have gone way down despite larceny going up. So see that number? There were years where over 60%. Yeah. Yeah, because they decriminalized larceny, dude. Or not larceny, but petty theft. That's why. Because they decriminalized it. Of course. That was literally the point. Lego. Hey, chatters. Do you want to know why that happened? Now, the increase in larceny is attributed to socioeconomic conditions failing. For a lot of people but the reason why they decriminalized petty theft is so that they could deal with their overpopulated prisons okay that's it there isn't like a there isn't like a heartwarming a gushy liberal reason for it the real reason is because the prison population is overpopulated, overcrowded. Is they there's too many people in prison already? Build a new one? Yeah, exactly. You're right. Of those those thefts went, you know, either arrested, prosecuted, charged, down to was it 17? Well, crime is going down, Steven. I'm going to go steal shampoo if I get caught. Time. I'll just say Hassan Abi told me is justified. <laughs> Good luck, brother. They're not prosecuted. Yeah, exactly. So we get fucking caught and literally rot in jail for like 30 years. How about that? You know, because that's the world you advocate for, right? Shampoo thefts. Uh, shampoo theft should be uh, met with the long dick of the law. So I hope you get caught when you're stealing shampoo and they throw you in jail for like 25 years, okay? How about that? Or we get caught and then fucking subjected to police brutality. You know, the solutions that you would like for crime. So they've already closed 17 Walgreens in San Francisco. Some wow. people say it's due to theft. Some people say, well, no, you can't argue it's due to theft because they've closed a ton of stores in New York too. I understand your point there, but I would argue they closed in New York also due to theft. <laughs> this is the Let's issue right now is people are afraid. They don't want to be in the nightly news. You know, another area where black people live. And lose their entire livelihood. Let's let's be honest about what it is. <laughs> and I love how people separate. I don't know if if Walgreens, I believe in certain states, it's a their their franchises because of different pharmaceutical laws, but yeah. in general it's corporate. But look, let's not act like Walgreens is the only place that's oh, been affected by this. When people say, "Oh, these giant CEOs." Do you know what a franchise is? 
Yeah. Do you know that a franchise allows mom and pop shops to actually start up businesses without all of the overhead? Yeah. You know, when you go to, when you go to whatever, it could be a Chili's. You know, the mom and shop Walgreens. they Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> Wait, this is a, this is a betrayal of the, of the uh, strength of his argument. Like, this is basically an admission that like, my argument in and of itself was not strong enough. So I had to fucking make an argument for something entirely separate. Yeah, yeah, I know that uh, small mom and shop, uh, mom and pop shops, you know, opening up is very difficult. Now, why is that very difficult? Well, partially because of Walgreens, motherfucker, not just Amazon, but also Walgreens. So why are you defending Walgreens in that in that sentiment then? Half of these places are franchises. Oh, They're he's saying the Walgreens are franchises. Yeah, I know. Yeah, try to do a mom and pop uh, franchise, please. I, I would love to see how that works out. Just, you know, regular mom and pop franchises. You need to have a wall, tremendous, like a fuckload of capital to be able to literally uh, operate a franchise and own a franchise, first and foremost. And secondly, again, those losses are still recovered by insurance for those fucking franchises. But it doesn't matter because Walgreens is not a franchise. So why are you making an argument about franchises when Walgreens is not even a fucking franchise? Shut the fuck up. They're small business owners who just didn't, didn't, yeah. have, didn't have the capital to start something. But that's not what happened here. Oh my God, dude on their own you are hurting them yeah people have this idea that you own a turnkey business and you're a multi 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 millionaire right some people own three or four different ones and maybe make 15 grand a year eventually off of each one right Espe imagine somebody who franchised the subway two days before jared got arrested. <laughs> oh. they were like we finally the our paperwork. dream <laughs> yeah. i'm sorry our spokesperson did a what and the argument isn't that, like, uh, there's a level of wealth that makes it appropriate to fucking steal or anything like that. Maybe some people make that argument, but that's not even what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that the petty crime here is, is nothing. Like, it's literally nothing. If it's something to you, if you're stealing from a mom and pop shop, well, then you're fucking them over. And that's fucked up. But Walgreens is not that. It costs 50k to even apply for a Walgreens franchise? Huh. Okay, that was great. Now let's uh, let's take a look at at least some shit that is going to be not as annoying or horrible because the Joe Rogan experience. The country's not about anything other than money. I mean, we just abandon every value other than 